Hi, I'm Stephanie Valentic at Waste Expo with the Waste 360 Coffee Talk. Joining me today is Tom from Hitachi Zosa Nova. How are you today, Tom? I'm doing great. How are you? I am doing very well. Good. Can you please start? Tell me a little bit about your company. What do you do? Sure. Uh, Hitachi Sosa Nova is a, a global clean tech uh, company that uh, deploys various different technologies to uh, take waste and reuse it for beneficial reuse to make renewable energy or beneficial byproducts out of. We're uh, based out of Zurich, Switzerland, uh, with about 2,200 people uh, in Zurich, uh, and we are part of an overall uh, uh, global conglomerate that's uh, based out of Osaka, Japan, Hitachi Sosen Corporation. So I heard you had one of the most advanced organic waste diversion facilities. Can you please tell me a little bit about that? Yes, uh, it's, it's our uh, Campo Gas uh, anaerobic digestion facility in San Luis Obispo, California, which is going on its uh, sixth year of operation now. We, uh, the facility is our first one in North America. We have about 110 or so facilities worldwide, but uh, San Luis Obispo is the first one. Uh, in the US and we treat organic waste uh, that's being diverted from uh, the landfill and we make a renewable gas out of it that then subsequently powers uh, an engine and makes electricity for uh, the power grid basically. Um, can you tell me a little bit about the numbers um, the ones gen um, generated from slow over the last five years. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the San Luis Obispo facility is a relatively small facility for us. Its uh, nameplate capacity is 36,000 tons per year. Uh, so over the uh, first five years of operation, we diverted about 144,000 tons of organic waste away from landfill. Uh, which in, in, in other numbers, it's about 11,000 garbage trucks worth of stuff. Uh, that's being diverted from landfill and put to beneficial uh, use. We produced uh, in the last five years about 11 million kilowatts of electricity, which powers about 370, 380,000 homes, average size homes. So uh, that translates into roughly about 200 homes a day. That's absolutely incredible. Um, tell me about the collaboration and the regulatory support that is needed to make an organic waste diversion initiative successful like yours. It takes a lot of parties to come together to the table. Uh, first and foremost, uh, we need to secure the waste stream. And the waste stream is controlled by either the municipality or the waste hauler that's servicing this municipality. So we, uh, we need the collaboration between uh, uh, politics, which is the uh, diversion laws, for instance, and then the waste hauler that controls that waste stream and then bring it to us. And then you have, of course, uh, local permitting authorities that need to collaborate. A lot of times, especially in our technology, it's a first off facility, so permitting authorities don't really know how to handle that type of technology. And then it takes community involvement. Uh, a lot of times in the waste sector, everybody says, please do something beneficial with the waste, but don't do it at my house where I can see it. So uh, it, it basically takes public outreach, uh, policy, and, uh, and, and waste control are the main things. So speaking of public outreach, can you please tell me a little bit about your relationship with the community and their involvement in this organic waste initiative? We have a very good relationship with the community. We have a uh, semi-annual free compost giveaway. When we produce this renewable energy out of the organic waste, we have a byproduct that comes off this facility, which is organic compost. So it helps build organic soil. So not only do we create a carbon negative energy, we also uh, replace uh, the use of fossil fuel based fertilizers by making organic compost. And we have twice a year, we have a uh, compost giveaway to the community. Uh, and the last one we had was in April. There was over 150 people that, or 180 people, I'm sorry, show up in pickup trucks and shovels and buckets. And, and over the course of the last five years, we have given away about 800 tons of free compost to the local community. And uh, people love it. So they love the facility, they love what we do, and they're more than happy to use the free compost in their garden projects. So what exactly does the future look like then? The future, uh, hopefully, is that uh, every major community 
in the United States will have one of those facilities because what we, what we do is we prevent greenhouse gas emissions. Historically, waste has been dumped into landfills in the United States where they can be a significant contributor to greenhouse gas emission. When the waste decomposes, emits methane gas. Methane gas is a, a 20 to 50 times worse pollutant than CO2 is to the uh, ozone layer. Uh, and uh, by diverting uh, organics out of the landfill, we capture those methane emissions and put them to beneficial use in the form of biogas to electricity or biogas to renewable natural gas. So we can decarbonize the electricity grid or we can decarbonize the natural gas grid with these renewable gases. And uh, hopefully in the future, every community over 120,000 people will have one of those facilities and uh, displace the use of fossil fuel based fuels. Well, thank you. Thank you so much for telling me a little bit more about Hitachi Zosin Innova. And everybody, thank you so much for joining us. This is Stephanie Valentic, and it's been another Waste360 Coffee Talk.